Commissioner Court of Bradshaw County will meet regular session on March the 30th, 2021, uh, 10 a.m. Commissioner's Courtroom, County Administration Building, 200 South Texas Avenue, Suite 106. First item on the agenda is invocation pledge of allegiance of the U.S. and Texas flag. Commissioner Ford will lead those. Please pray with me. We're taught a, before entering upon any great and laudable undertaking, we should first invoke the aid of deity. With that said, uh, Lord, please help us today as we transact the business of Brazos County. Uh, guide us in, in our efforts. Watch over our first responders, our military, and our educators. Uh, Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to live in the great state of Texas, and particularly Brazos County. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor of the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> Second item on the agenda is call for citizens' input and our concerns. Hearing none, we'll have number three is presentation and discussions, presentation and results of the FY 2020 economic impact Impact analysis of Bradshaw County Expo. Carl. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Uh, I just want to take a couple minutes before we get into the numbers and the dollars and the days and all that stuff. Uh, I, I'm really excited on what we, what we were able to accomplish last year in light of everything that we went through. Uh, up to and including the freeze. Uh, we were stretched pretty thin and uh, we were pretty crippled during that storm, but we had like 500 horses out there uh, during that week that we had to take care of. And, and uh, uh, this goes to show you how well the county works and all the departments work. We were, we were, would not have been able to operate if it hadn't been for Ernest and uh, the facilities group. That, uh, we, were, we were literally plugging one hole after the other uh, just trying to keep the water on out there and uh, we had people from all across the United States here and uh, you know it's just uh, of course we were in the we were in the rolling blackout but they weren't rolling much our way because we only had about 45 minutes and then we could be off eight to ten hours so uh, you know in that aspect we we, uh, we, uh, we were lucky that the power came back on when it did and uh, that ended up being probably like a $68,000 weekend for us. So uh, if we'd have had to cancel that, it would have been, been, been a big shot in the arm. But, but uh, you know, I just want to you know, let you guys know that you know, our staff, uh, we couldn't have done it without our staff. You know, every, everybody went over and above uh, what they were supposed to. We actually had some guys that stayed out there at the expo, uh, you know, spent the night there because they couldn't get back and forth during the freeze. And, uh, so anyhow, with 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 uh, you know with COVID going on the way it did last year, we were we were lucky enough to uh, we were lucky enough to be able to get back to operation when we did, uh, and I think we were one of the first ones that did, and, and that was thanks to the size of our facility and the fact that we were able to to provide distancing for folks and. Uh, you know, we had our challenges as well, you know, with, with the face mask and as much as we did. But, you know, it was apparent after the first few when we started back that, that the numbers were, some of them were doubling. So we were really lucky that, that, that we were kind of under the radar and, and livestock and equine events were able to operate and, and uh, we were able to get, keep those numbers going. So, you know, we really never missed a beat after that. Uh, so. Uh, well, while the numbers don't reflect it, I really feel like, I mean, that, that was our finest hour. Last year was, was, was the Expo's finest year, you know, with all we had to deal with, up, like I said, up to and including the freeze. So, uh, you know, with, with that, uh, I'll continue on. So, this morning's presentation provides the results of the 8th Annual Economic Impact Study completed for the Brazos County Expo. Specifically, it covers FY 2020. October 1st, 2019 through September 30th, 2020, our 13th year of actual operation. We all know 2020 was a challenging year on many fronts. Tourism certainly took a hit as events across the country were canceled or moved to a virtual platform. 
In fact, the expo was closed from March 15th through May 28th. We were fortunate to resume operations and welcome visitors to Brazos County over the summer, even as local businesses and hotels remained depressed throughout the summer and fall. Our original FY 2020 calendar included 208 events over 462 days, which would have exceeded our 2019 activity. We were still able to host 138 events over 293 days, although 70 events canceled and two <clears throat> reduced to half their original size. The onset of the COVID-19 pandemic almost exactly a year ago prevented us from sharing our 2019 impacts with the Commissioner's Court. We welcomed 141,436 visitors, including the fair, in 2019. Non-local visitors spent $15.6 million, generating impacts of $22.3 million in output and 225 jobs. That was for 2019. In 2020, the Expo welcomed 109,489 visitors, including the scaled-down Brazos Valley Fair and Rodeo. Non-local visitors spent $12.5 million, generating impacts of $15.8 million in output and 159 jobs this past year. That's what I'm really excited about, is we were able to, to stay as close to 2019 as we were with everything that went on last year. So $23 million compared to $15.8 million. She can't hear. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. How about that, Ms. Cawley? <clears throat> so in, in, back to that, 23 million in 2019 and 15.8 million last year, which I think is exceptional for what for what we had to go through and everything we had to uh, endure. Yes, those figures are lower than our 2019 impacts, but if we had hosted the 72 events COVID pushed from our calendar, we'd have been within 700,000 of the 200, 2019 impacts, even though each visitor spent less money in 2020 uh, than in 2019. Dr. Dudensang will tell you that's a, those are uh, rounding errors. We know the economy is still struggling and in hard economic times, visitors spend less freely. Obviously, we can't control what visitors spend when they come to Brazos County. However, we manage our calendar with the purpose of attracting and entertaining those events that provide a strong contribution to the local economy. Our staff works extremely hard to ensure our events and guests want to return to Brazos County. Our activity has picked up significantly since the fall and our 2021 <clears throat> calendar is strong. In fact, as of today, we have only two weekends that are not double booked and we're thriving again. Dr. Dudensing is going to report on those economic Im impacts this morning. Dr. Dudensing is an associate professor and extension economist for community economic development with the Texas A&M University AgriLife Extension Service. After the presentation, Dr. Dudensing will answer any questions from members of the court, and then we will move to the atrium for any remaining questions. Dr. Dudensing. shorter than Carl. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. I am really happy to be here today, especially having missed last year uh, because nobody was meeting for COVID and we did want to be in person. Um, and so I, I'm going to start, as Carl mentioned, or maybe I'm not on. Yep, that's the problem. All right, that's why I have a PhD. And something happened. Thanks, thank you. Um, okay, so we are going to start with 2019 because we didn't get to show you those numbers. Uh, with the fair, there were 241,000 visitors. Uh, and as you remember, um, we don't include the fair traditionally in the economic impacts. Uh, the fair is not exclusively local visitors, but it is a lot of local um, individuals participating in the fair. And over time, we've really looked at other events. Um, and particularly, we look at people who are coming from outside Brazos County. Um, and so without the fair last year, there were 225,000 visitors. Um, and then we had 195 events over 402 days in 2019. The, uh, the economic impacts across the entire county as, uh, as visitors spent money, people from outside the county spent money while they were here. The direct effect is their spending. 
the indirect effect is business to business activities. So, you know, they go and, and they eat at a restaurant and restaurants are buying from local wholesalers and, and, you know, running out and getting supplies other places. The induced effect is household spending. So the employees of all those businesses where they're spending back in the county. And then, of course, the total is the sum of that. So 22,000, uh, or sorry, 22.3 million in output and 224 jobs in 2019. And as we look at the growth over time, you remember that when I was here last time in 2018, the expo had almost doubled its activity as a result of the phase three expansion. And it's pretty hard to keep growing on that. And yet there was almost 6% um, output growth um, based on the sales of visitors in 2019. And of course, then we know that 2020 looked very different. Um, and th those photos do come from the Expo's Facebook site. Um, the, as Carl mentioned, the, the Expo was closed for two and a half months completely. Um, and then they've done, they've done their bit for service as well, right? Um, in terms of, you know, helping with some of the testing and providing space for that and so forth. Um, so numbers were down this year. Uh, there were 138 events, um, 188, almost 189,000 person days. Um, and as you saw in that previous slide, that was down from 195 events last year and the 208 events planned for FY20, um, over 402 days. And instead, they were actually able to host 293 days. And you guys have um, on your, um, in your packets there, you have both the 19 study, which is the regular portrait study, and then the landscape 2020. And there's also a similar table that shows the breakdown of events that were, um, that were canceled over that time so you can see exactly what types of events canceled in your report. I want to spend just a moment talking about survey spending. Um, and you can see there in 2020, in many categories, spending was down. It was up some in rodeos. And you remember the reason that we have a three-year average. And it's because we can't survey every event this year. We'd end up with every event each year. We'd end up with survey fatigue and people no longer taking our surveys. So we try to survey different groups over time um, to have a representative sample. Um, so in horse shows and livestock shows, which are the two biggest categories for the expo, spending was down this year over last year. Rodeos was up, um, potentially a little bit because of, of what, got, um, what got surveyed, but also rodeos are just random. You never, the rodeo spending is probably the most variable spending among any of the categories. Um, and so I think it's important to realize here that, you know, the first half of FY20 was normal and spending was actually pretty strong. Um, and then, you know, then COVID hit and, and the recession hit. And so I think we're going to see spending numbers continue to climb into the future. But the real story here then is actually those lost visitor days. And so you can see, you know, there doesn't seem like there's a huge difference in spending, but when you get into the total spending, multiplying those persons, uh, those, those individual people by, um, by the actual number of person days, horse shows, livestock shows uh, were down pretty significantly in terms of total spending. And then across all event categories, spending, spending was down as well, just as a result of person days being down. So spending this year uh, was 12.5 million. You can see that down in the bottom corner um, for all categories um, across all different types of spending. So people who came to the county spent $12.5 million. Um, among the individual groups, if you have a question about something specific, um, other than the top three, which I'll go over, those are, um, I've got some slides on that in the back and I could sort of scroll forward to those. But the economic impact of horse shows in FY20 was 6.5 million and 64 jobs. Not going forwards again. There we go. Livestock shows 4.7 million and 47 jobs. And then rodeos 3.3 million and 34 jobs um, across the entire county. And so once, um, I, oh, wow, okay. Wow. Well, you can see I've got these for all the other events as well. Um, man, me and the uh, clicker today are having a go. I am so sorry. Okay. So normally I don't like to talk a lot about 2020 spending. You know I come in and I say let's focus on the three-year average. Um, but I think it's important to realize uh, that 2020 spending was down. And so when we think about the total effect here, um, if we just use 2020 spending, 13.4 million and 138 jobs, uh, 
you know, COVID is a big event and it's going to keep showing up over the next. This isn't a little blip that we're evening out. It's going to be a big event and it's going to stick with us. And so we've got this one week year with 2020 in our three year average and two pretty strong years ahead of that. When we get to include those two strong years, that's where we get that 15.8 million um, in economic output and 158, uh, 159 jobs. And so this is the number that, that I would use. I mean, we talk about using a three-year average, um, and, and there's a reason for that. Um, and so averaging the events over time and averaging changes in the economy, unfortunately, this change is going to stick with us for a while, I think. So when we look at um, my favorite table, which... Oh, oh, and the foregone events. I'm sorry, I forgot I had stuck that one in there as well. These were if the expo had hosted the, the 70, well, the 70 events that canceled and the two events that went half, if those had actually been held as planned, they would have contributed another 5.8 million and 60 jobs to the economy. We can estimate the number of people. We know the number of days they had booked. We can estimate the number of people either based on past attendance of that event or their contract if it was an event that had not been here in the past. Um, so now my favorite table, and you can see we've been doing these studies since 2013, um, and you know we've showed consistent growth over time. This is the first time there has been a decline in growth, um, and it is a 29% drop um, from 22.3 million last year to 15.7 million dollars this year, um, mostly due to decreases in the number of people through the door. Um, and I expect. Um, and, and it would have been, you know, it would have been right back up there, as Carl mentioned earlier, um, within about 700,000 um, if we had been able to host those events that would have brought in that $5.8 million. Man, sorry, guys. All right. I do want to talk just a little bit rolling forward because I think we're going to see that the Expo's um, fiscal year 2021 is better. Um, and I, I certainly don't think, you know, man, I, I hate to see a 29% decrease in 20, but, you know, 20 was a rough year. Um, and so I think we're going to see it better in 21. Um, they've got a full um, calendar, as Carl mentioned, and things have really picked up starting in the fall of last year. Um, however, the economy is still weak, and we're going to see that going forward. So last year, we really only had a half year of rough spending. Um, this year, we're going to see, you know, we're still in economic difficulty. We're going to see a full year of economic spending. Not to mention, in that three-year average, instead of having one bad year and two good years, we're going to have two bad years and one good year. And those two years are going to stick with us for a couple more years in that three-year average. Um, and so we're going to continue to sp see um, some, some weaker spending than we would like to see in that annual report. Um, but I think that you're going to see the expo just based on person days regain at least most of that ground, if not all of that ground in fiscal year 21. Probably not going to see a return to strong growth until 2022. And, and then, of course, we, we can't expect them to double every few years, um, as they've done in the past um, with, with huge growth. I mean, they've finished their... Um, they finished the, uh, the expansion, and they've got multiple events out there every weekend. Um, you know, unless they start having events on the roof, they're going to start running out of space. Um, so we probably won't see that same level of growth, but I think we're going to see it bounce back. And um, that is really the presentation that I have for you all today, unless you have any questions of me. Do have any questions? Thank you, Dr. All right, Putin. thank you. Um, it's... Uh, you know, based on what we had, what the year was last year, that's pretty good uh, results. So, I thought so too. I was curious when I started the analysis, but it ended up better than I expected. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> thanks to Carl and his staff for yeah. doing such a great job out there. Okay, we <clears throat> we will move on and consider and take action on agenda items four through twenty. Number four is approval of resolution 21-010, recognizing Dr. Garth Morgan for his service in Brass County Health uh, Board. Move approval. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. Uh, Dr. Morgan has been on there a long time and uh, has uh, decided to step down, but he's been there a long time and has been a, a great asset to the health district. I don't know whether, Steve, you, you've on that board so uh yes sir it, well it's been nice to have uh someone who on the board who has a medical practice uh ongoing and was able to put uh 
uh, that type of input uh, into uh, ideas and decision making for the health district overall uh, and uh, in our next agenda item uh, assuming its passage you will see the Brazos County appointees continue in that type of perspective and I think that will be beneficial to all of us but certainly for the large number of years 20 plus uh, for Dr. Morgan uh, our thanks to him for uh, serving our community on, on our behalf I agree all right all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed none motion carries number five is appointment of Dr. Uh, J. Maddock uh, to the Bradford County Board of Health. The term of appointment is March 30, 2021 to March 29, 2023. Move approval. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Uh, we're looking forward to having Dr. Maddock on the board. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. Number <clears throat> six is appointment of the following Bradford County Housing Finance Corporation effective. 32221. Move, move approval A and B. Second. Motion made and to approve A and B. Discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, motion carries. <clears throat> Number seven is appointment with the following Brass County Health Facilities Development Corporation, effective 32221. Move approval A and B. Second. Motion made and Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None motion carries. Number eight is appointment of the following Brazos County in, uh, Industrial Development Corporation, effective 3221. Move approval A and B. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None motion carries. Number nine is request for fleet services for a payment authorization to Petro Choice for six cases of high temp grease in the amount of $125.40 purchase order was obtained in advance, but the quality quantity ordered exceeded the purchase order amount. Move approval. Second. Motion made second to discussion. <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> None motion carries. Number 10 is approval to the change of the regular meeting day for the commissioner's court Tuesday uh, from from Tuesday, April 6th to Monday, April 5th, 2021. Move approved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. So that's next to or next Monday. Is that? Mm -hmm. I think that's correct. So that yeah. We will change the date from Tuesday to Monday. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. <clears throat> Uh, number 11 is approval to rehire the former employees and or retire ease policy. Move approval. Second. Motion made second to discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None motion carries. Number 12 is renewal of 22-001 extradition services for prisoners with U.S. Uh, Corrections LLC. Move approval. Second. Motion made second to discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None motion carries. Number 13 is approval of interlocal agreement with Brazos Valley Council of Governments in the, for the administration of the Brazos County Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Move approval. Second. Motion made seconded. Discussion. Do you, uh, we want to have kind of, Michael, you want to kind of share, I mean, what the, this whole thing was, yeah, Come on up. Real quick. Um, for the record, I'm Michael Parks. I'm the Assistant Executive Director of the Brass Valley Council of Governments. Thank you for having us here today. Um, this program is a pretty neat one, actually. If neat is a technical term. Um, we have, as a county, received some funding, and we at the Brass Valley Council of Governments administer funds like this. The county has received a certain amount of money, and so uh, we do rental assistance, so the judge approached us and, and others and said, would you guys be interested in, in, in staffing this endeavor? And so we said yes, and so this agreement you have for you today, we worked out with uh, Mr. Bull, and I don't see him. He was here just a minute ago. But uh, we look forward to getting to work. It's a temporary program, but it's one that will help <clears throat> citizens of Brazos County pay back rents, and it also can pay some future rents. 
And so we're very excited that as a result of COVID, if, they, if families have been impacted by this, that there's some relief there. And so there, is, there are rules to any program, there come strings, but uh, we're here to ensure that we follow those rules and, and process it in a timely fashion. So we're happy to, to, to assist the county in this respect, and we look forward to, uh, to implementing this program. Yeah. Michael, what's the dollar amount of the grant? We've been told it's about $6 million. Great. And so there, that can go a long way to helping uh, citizens of Brazos County. Sure can. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Judge, is this in addition to the 6.9? This, this is it. That's this is a 6.9? That's what this is. Uh, it's a total of 6.9, but I think administrative maybe is There's 10%. a small fee. It's, it's yeah. not 0. 0.9, but no. <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's administrative fee in there. But the bulk of it is going to help uh, folks right. here. That's right. That's Michael, right. without getting in, into too many details, how does an individual that would like to apply for this program, what, what, what well, are the steps? Assuming the court passes the, the, the motion, um, we'll get the word out. Then advertising takes place, and we will office right here in the courthouse annex, and uh, citizens can call or they can email, and they can come in to see us. But we'll have staff here in this building to assist residents as the need arises. The most important thing is they reach out to you. You'll hand carry them through the process. Yes, sir. Once we'll we'll walk them through the process. I have uh, Brian Jones and and uh, Norma with me here. Uh, they're going to staff it, and so I, I think it, people will be in good hands. But stay tuned for the advertising because there's <laughs> going to have to be a significant amount of advertising to get the word out. You know, I know our justices of the peace have been uh, involved in a pilot program that was started out. Uh, will we continue to have their input into the process uh, on what's going to change here and how things are different? And y'all can also get their input from what their experience has been. Absolutely. Very Absolutely, good. Commissioner. I, I don't think it's going to be a change. I think it's going to be in addition to yes. what's, what's going on. There are multiple facets to yeah. many different federal programs where you can achieve common, commonality with rental assistance. Um, this is another type of those. And so it just adds to the tools in our toolbox to help folks. Where they might not qualify for one, we might be able to qualify them for a different one. And so we're, as having a one-stop shop for housing assistance, we can look at several different methods to achieve the same goal. Just question, any of the other counties uh, participating and having similar agreements in our seven county council of governments? If there are, we have not heard of them. Uh, but I, I would suspect that more is on the way. I think each county had an option of whether to participate or not, but uh, uh, Judge Peters reached out to us, and so we're, we're Johnny on the spot as best we can be. Well, yeah, I, think, hopefully. I think you had to have a population above. Uh, we met po okay. population qualification, but I don't think the other six counties did. Uh, okay. That could very well and, be it. And we looked at whether any of that money could be used in the surrounding counties, and it can't. It's limited to Bradford County. That was the way it was. legislation was written. And there is a time frame on it, too. We have to have all of the, ob yeah. the funds obligated, or any of the funds under the program have to be obligated by the end of September. We have till the end of December to actually um, work the program. But it's a short-lived program, so we have to get the word out quick, and we need people to respond quickly so we can take care of business. Well, I really like this because it's a win-win between people who have fallen upon difficult times mm -hmm. and transferring that uh, lack of cash flow to uh, people who own the properties. It's going to help them out both ways. So it, it really seems to be a win-win. And great to have you all working with us administratively on making sure that uh, we get this done for the people in Brazos County. Absolutely. Thank you. Right. And it needs to be tied back to COVID. That's I part of what this is. It's, yes. uh, it, uh, the landlord and the, the tenant will have to <coughs> certify that that was the reason that they were failed to make their rental payments. And that's part of what our staff brings yeah. to the, the process is we will verify all of that. Yeah. Right. All okay. right. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mike. Um, we've got a motion and a second, I believe. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None motion carries. <clears throat> Number 14 is approval of formal termination affiliation agreement with Strategic Behavioral Health, LLC. Move approval. Second. second. Motion made and seconded discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
None motion carried. Number 15 is approved Brazos County, uh, Brazos Valley Incident Management Team contract for services. Move approval. Second. second. Motion made. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None motion carries. Number 16 acceptance of a special warranty deed from Brandon James Dominguez and Amanda L. Dominguez for 0 0.04 acre of land to be used for improvements on Straub Road. Uh, sites located in precinct one. Move approval. Second. Motion made. Second. The discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. <clears throat> Number 17 tax uh, fund application for the following. Move approval A through J. Second. Motion made. Second. The discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Number 18 budget amendments. Budget amendments FY. 20 slash 21, 25.1. Move approval. Second. Motion made. Second to discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. Number 19's personnel change of status. Move approval A and B. Second. Motion made. Second to approve A and B. Discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? None motion carries. Number 20 is payment of claims. Claims be paid by Brazos County at claim number 8106538 through claim number 8106668 and claims number 9001553 through claim number 9001594. Move approval. Second. Motion made. Second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? None motion carries. Number 21 is acknowledgement of the City of Bryan and of the City of Bryan Brazos County Economic Development Foundation audited financial report and audit uh, opinion for the fiscal year 2020. And I think that's just an acknowledgement. Uh, 22 is acknowledgement of monthly reports submitted March of 2021. Uh, 23 is juvenile director's report on detention population. And Linda wasn't here this morning, but she sent, uh, there are 18 males, three females, there are eight juveniles in isolation as per protocol, and 22 youth are on electronic monitors. And number 24, Sheriff's report on inmate population, sure. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Peak in the last 24 hours is 535. That's 477 men, 58 women. Uh, continue to uh, have zero active, po uh, active positives in the jail and three employees out. We have uh, 31 on electronic monitor with eight pending. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sure. <clears throat> Number 25 is announcement of uh, interest items and possible future agenda topics. Uh, Judge, I want to uh, point out that uh, Tom Wilkinson is retiring from the uh, Council of Governments and there's a reception this afternoon to honor him and to congratulate Michael Parks on his appointment as the new uh, Executive Director of the Council of Governments. Thank you, Commissioner. Judge, I'd, I'd like to ask that we bring Michael and the Council of Governments back in about two months to see how the program is uh, is moving forward. I had a concern with those kind of dollars that you're talking about that we're going to be able to get it done. I didn't realize it had, had to be done by September. So I think you had a, a big challenge. I'd like to hear, hear how you're doing. We do. We come back. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, any other announcements? 